Proverbs chapter 24. We left off at verse 19. Fret not, that means don't worry about it, thyself because of evil men. I'll go back to verse 1. Be not envious against evil men. Don't worry about it and don't want to be like them. That simple. Don't be it, don't be evil. <coughs> don't be like an evil. And don't be in a company of evil. Plain and simple. Neither be thou envious. Press one. At the wicked. That's plain and simple. Don't want what the wicked has. Don't think the wicked, oh, they're doing so great and so wonderful and so fine. They're not. It's plain and simple what the Bible says. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. You have chances of getting a reward. What if that verse is said for a Christian who's evil? No reward. The candle of the wicked wicked shall be put out. That, again, I said it over and over. That pictures life, death. I'm talking about death. God just blows that life out. So what do you do? You know, God hates the sin and loves the sinner. You crumple it up and throw it in the garbage can. My son, Solomon writing to Rehoboam, God writing to us, Fear thou the Lord and the King. We can't do that in America. We don't have a king. But we're a Christian nation. So, if you Christians out there, if we were to get a Democratic or Democrat president in the future, the Bible says you're to fear the Lord and the king. Romans 13. And meddle not with them that are given to change. Your vote can change. We can change everything if we vote. We can change the whole government. If everybody gets up, your vote can count. What did you just read in the scripture? So when you get a Christian, go out and vote because you can change. Your vote counts. God said to the inspiration of, of the Holy Spirit through Solomon, don't have or meddle with anybody that's given to change. We can change the government. All right, I don't have anything to do with you then. And I don't. You go your way, I'll go my way. You vote, I'll preach the gospel. But we're going to vote and we get. And you make God sick. Don't like it? Don't get mad at Stiley Hayward. Get mad at the scriptures and tell God he's wrong. I dare you to. So. For their calamity, those are given the change shall rise suddenly. We, our political party, didn't win. <laughs> and who knoweth the ruin of them both? Well, you sure not talking about the ruin of the Lord. He's talking about those again to change and their calamity. And when you going to change things, there is calamity and there is ruin. That's not a Christian who does right. These things also belong to the wise. 
It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Well, you know, if we all vote Republican down the ticket. You know, those Democrats, they're all rotten. They're all baby killers. Don't vote. Don't. And this political message today has been brought to you by Proverbs chapter 24, and it's approved of God. Yeah, I know what you're going to do. Style is trick. Style is twisting the scripture so he can point out his point of view on how he feels about election. Okay, the judgment seat of Christ, or maybe for some of you, the great white throne judgment, you will see that the Bible and I are correct and you are wrong. Okay? Because I know many Christians, Baptists, who have respect to Republicans. That there is no Democrat that does ever good. And they'll even give you a list. And they'll check it twice and make sure they voted. Alright? I'm just trying to give you the facts of life here. Just trying to tell you the truth. Just trying to wake up your eyes. Alright, we're done. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous. Whoa. You know, I've said over and over, the wicked is the wicked. Vile. I've also said that, that the wicked, I got it marked, the wicked. It has reference to the Antichrist. The devil incarnate in the flesh. And there are going to be people coming up that are going to have the Antichrist, the wicked one, and they're going to walk up to, you're righteous, you're great, you're God. Some people say that about the Republicans. Oh. I mean, he's only prideful, and they, if I had admit it to me, he's very much in pride. He's only been divorced three times, and he's bankrupted his businesses six times. And I know churches that wouldn't even allow him to be part of the uh, uh, membership of that church with those qualifications. But since he's Republican, since he, you know, He's the right one. Wow. Really? Nations. Wait a minute, I didn't think. Thou art right. Him, him, the one that says you're righteous to the wicked, shall the people curse. He that say it to the wicked. Thou art righteous. Hidden the people. That's not happening today. The people are cursing. Oh, you don't vote? You're going to vote Democrat? I don't vote at all. Nations shall abhor him. The world loves so we are going in defiance of the Bible. I'm sorry this looks political, but I'll tell you one nation is going to hate those that call the Antichrist right. It's going to be the Jews. Especially at the three and a half years when he opens up that, 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 that veil and there he is seated in the most holy place. And those nations that unknowingly help the Jew. That don't even know what they're doing to help the Jew. But to them that rebuke him. You walk up to the man that's calling the devil. Calling all Republicans. Thou art righteous. The one that rebuketh him shall be delight. <laughs> Not in your 
Bible Baptist churches. And a good blessing shall come upon them. A good blessing delight has to be from the Lord. That man's standing up. That man's preaching the word of God. That man is staying true to me. The others are not. We're rich. We're great. We're wonderful. Yay! I'll pat ourselves on the back. God's up there. Gabriel, give me another one of them bags. While Jesus is standing outside that door. You gotta remember, I told someone the other day, I don't know who I told it, we're in the lad to see in church age. It is not a church age to be boasting about. What about you? I ain't boasting. I am not doing a nearly a tip of what the open door church done, the Philadelphia church age. I should be doing more, much more than what I'm doing now. Every man shall kiss his lips that giveth a right answer. Someone's a truth teller. Boy, those are far wide. Someone actually gets out there and tells the truth. Paul told one church, have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth? I come from a Catholic family, Polish Catholic family. You want to hear how they are when you tell them about the truth of their church? Oh, they won't love you no more. They won't have anything to do with you no more. I know, I witness to my Catholic family. Prepare thy work without. And make it fit for thyself in the field. Food, crop. Hey, and afterwards, build thy house. You know what the priority Solomon says? Get out there, get a job, settle your job, build up a finance, build up a nest egg, and then once you, you're secure, then Build a house for yourself. People today, they're, they're, you know, we're in college. We haven't started our career. Got to get a house. The World War One, World War Two generations, they didn't get a house until after they had a job and they had a family. And then they made sure they had the finances and they worked hard on the marriage and to get to hell. Be not a witness against thy neighbor. Exodus 20, 16. Without a cause. You realize the Pharisees and Sadducees went out seeking false witnesses and many came? In violation of Exodus 20, that's one of the big Ten Commandments. That's not bear false witness. And then what Proverbs says. Without cause. All right. If you have a cause. But if there is no cause. Don't witness against your neighbor. And, and throughout all the world. There are people, I believe, will stand in some kind of form of a courtroom, whatever country they're in, however they do it, and they'll be standing in that courtroom or that trial, however it is, and they're just there because they hate the person that's on the stand. And they have nothing to say but lies. And deceive not with thy lips. Don't you fraud yourself. Don't you slander yourself. Don't you lie. Man, they stood in line against Jesus.
Say not. I will do so to him as he done to as he had done to me. I will. That's the golden rule, and the Bible says, "Say not." And you'll hear many people in your life, well, "I'll do unto him." God says, "I will render to the man according to his work, not you." Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord; I will repay. Many people forget to say, saith the Lord, I, God, will repay. And then warning. Come back over here. When God does repay. Verse 17. Rejoice not when thy neighbor fall, when thy enemy falleth, and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth. Least the Lord see it. And displease him, God, and he turn away the wrath from him. When the Lord does repay your enemy, don't you dare get happy about it. So God may, okay, that's enough. You want to act like that, a child of me? I went by the field of the slothful, lazy man, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. He's got a vineyard. He don't even know how to how, what to do with the vineyard. I mean, he has no understanding how he got that vineyard. Vineyard? Why he got that? Why he doesn't know what to do with the vineyard. The first guy, he's just lazy. The second guy, oh, oh, I'll just buy me a vineyard and I'll get drunk with all the wine. Ho, ho, ho. Well, what do you do with the vineyard? I don't know. And lo, it was grown over with thorns. That's the curse from Genesis 3. And nettle covered the face thereof. Weed. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. You know, that, it takes a long time for a stone wall to break down. Wind and weather, and, and they do get snow up north. You'll find with wind and rain and snow and ice up north, you'll find these stone walls, and you'll find eventually some of the, some of the rocks are caving over. And, and by animals and trees falling down, tree limbs, Then I saw and considered it well. Well, look at that good for nothing. I mean, you you know, there's a house in your. You look at the property. Now we got our property over here in the corner, but no one's living in it. And looked upon it. And received instruction as somebody who ain't taking care of his property and they make whole TV shows about these lazy people oh we're gonna put them in the spotlight Solomon said no what is what does Solomon learn a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of hands to sleep. That's for the guy that has no understanding too. Verse 30. He buys a vineyard and he just. Grapes are going to grow. And wine is going to flow. Are you that stupid? There are many stupid people. So shall thy poverty. That doesn't happen with a vineyard poverty. Man, the vineyard brings forth grapes, it brings forth raisins, it brings forth wine, it brings forth, you know, strong wine. It's not supposed to not bring you money. Unless 
you know how to manage money. That too. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth in pain and sorrow and anguish. But you're sleeping. You're resting. You won't get up. And in your laziness, you'll be like someone who's in great pain. And thy want of food, of money, of life, as an armed man. An armed man, he wants victory. He wants to go into a battle and win. He does not want to die. And here's this good for nothing lazy man with no understanding. And he doesn't do nothing at all. And he gets what he puts in. Nothing at all. 